Okay, I accidentally hit the stop button, so we're gonna we're gonna pick up, I hope, from where I left off. So this is methanol, and this is something called salicylic acid. That's a common name. It's basically a phenol group with a COOH stuck to it, right? But the important part, the part that reacts here, is the carboxylic acid portion. So basically, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this oxygen and connect it to this here carbon. And when we do that, we're gonna kick off this OH group, so that goes bye-bye, and this hydrogen group, which pair up to make water. Okay, so this is called a dehydration reaction sometimes. All right, and so the reason I'm showing you this is because I want you to understand how these are formed because the way you name an ester is based on how they're formed. Oh, there, I remembered what I was doing. I was trying to fix the naming here. So the methanol is this one and it makes this winter green compound, um, which is pretty cool stuff. It smells good, um, not like mint, you know? So this is an ester because we have that C double bond O with another O and, a, and an, another carbon group. So this is the thing to look for if you think you have an ester. So the official name of this thing is going to end in anoate. Okay, so let's go to a easier example here. So we to identify which one is the alcohol group, we look for that, that O that's trapped between the carbons, right? So this is the alcohol originally. We named that one first. So this as an alcohol with one carbon would have been called methanol, right? So we take off the OL and we put YL. So methyl is that group. And then we look over here for the other name and that carbonyl is always carbon number one. So that's going to be three carbons long. So prop and we are going to erase the, so propane is what we would start with, right? We're going to erase the E from propane and we replace it with, whoops, O-A-T-E. Okay, so over here, this is the, the alcohol oxygen, right? So, oops, let me just do the eraser thing. Boop. All right, so this is this group here would be our alcohol group. And so if that were an alcohol, an OH, then we would call that ethanol because it has two carbons. So we're going to turn that into ethyl. And then my carboxylic acid has two carbons. So that's going to be another eth. Ethane would be if it was just an alkane group, right? So I take off the E and add O8. So ethyl ethanoate is the name of this thing. Okay. Same thing over here. Now, I just want to point out this particular selection of esters happens to have the alcohol group always on the right, but it doesn't have to be. So don't get in the habit of just looking for what's on the right. You want to find where this oxygen is, and then that is your alcohol. That's what gets named first. So here we have propanol before it reacted to make its ester. And this would be five carbons, right? So pentane, whoops, I spelled that wrong. There's an extra E in there. Well, just erase it. So pentane as an alkane, right? But now we've connected this thing, so we have to change the ending. So it's gonna be propyl pentanoate. That sounds fun. Sounds like something scary that you'd buy at like a Halloween store or something. Okay. Amines and amides go together because they both have nitrogen in them. The difference between them is that amides have a carbonyl and amines don't, right? So here's an example of an amine. It's one of the most common amines that's used to make plastic. So methylamine, um, methyl because there's one carbon and amine because there's the NH right there. So we just count the carbons and name it the same way we've been naming everything. So methyl for one and then add the word amine to it. Uh, 
fix this. Sorry, sometimes when I go to make the video, the pictures aren't the right size when I when I record it. So methyl amine is one carbon with an H two attached. The same thing applies to when you've got a C double bond O, right? So there's one carbon in this compound, so methyl, and then we change the ending to amide. So like, for example, let's just do a made up one. Right? So this one would be called ethyl because it's got two and amine because it's just got the NH2 on it. Ethylamide could be written like this. Right? So it might be kind of condensed in there and you're supposed to be like, okay, well we got a CH3 and then a C double bond O. And I only know that's a double bond because I've only got the CH3 and the O on there and then the N, right? So this would be ethylamide because there's two carbons total. Okay. Aldehydes and ketones. We did this a lot in lab, but I just want to go over it real quick. So aldehydes are easy to name because the beginning of it gives you the end of the word. And ketones are easy because the end of the word is the end of the ketone. All right. So the main problem with uh, aldehydes and ketones is identifying which one you have. They both have a C double bond O. Aldehydes have it at the end. So look at these different models. Again, it's all drawn on the right here, but it doesn't have to be, right? The, it could be C double bond O on this side. But the important thing is it has to be on the end because it has to have this hydrogen in there to be an aldehyde. <coughs> ketones, on the other hand, are surrounded by carbon. So the ketones always go in the middle, right? So when you look at a, just a carbonyl group, C double bonded O, if it's on the end, it's an aldehyde. If it's in the middle, it's a ketone. Okay. And we just count the carbons, right? So meth and now, right? Because it's on the end. Eth and now. You can't have a methanone because you can't put a carbonyl on the middle of one carbon. It doesn't make sense, right? You got a CH no matter what you do. You can't have an ethanone either for the same reason. It's always going to be on an end. You can have a propanone. That's the smallest ketone because here you, you have to have a middle, right? So prop because of three and propanone because it's acetobono in the middle. Propanal is different. They smell different. They look different. They boil at different temperatures. Everything about them is different. All right. And so the same naming rules apply that we've been using all along, right? So this would be a uh, two methyl butanol because here's your first carbon, second, third, fourth. Remember that the carbonyl is always number one. All right, so two methyl butanol. Okay, so here are some resources to help you. All right, if you find other good ones, share them. Put them on the Blackboard site or email them to me and I'll post them if you're shy. That's okay. This one used to be super fun. It's a zombie game where you prevent zombies from eating your brains by naming alkanes quick. That is a great way to practice. Okay, but... Um, Definitely practicing is the number one thing when it comes to naming and, and writing reactions for this chapter. Feel free to reach out if you have any questions, as usual.